Hey everyone, welcome to Keep Shooting Monday number 77. My name is Greg Cazillo from Cazillo.com. Welcome to Keep Shooting Monday number 77. Did you hear that? Do you also know what today's date is? It's also 7 at 7 2014. That means it is your lucky day. Today I am going over the ultimate flash exposure tutorial. I'm going to talk all about the five things that make up flash in a photograph and what what all those work and how they work and I'm going to show you examples and uh, compare them so stick around for the entire show you might learn something even if you already have mastered flash you still could learn something extra today before I get into that it's important that you guys post your flash photos over to the forum because of the photo assignment that is due this Friday by 5 p.m. Eastern Post to the forum for the Keep Shooting photo assignment sponsored by Epson. Uh, Epson is sponsoring that, and that means you guys might win either a 16 by 20 or an 11 by 14 print printed on the 3880 on a couple different papers that they sent over. So get them posted again, 5 o'clock Eastern, posted over to the forum by this Friday. So let's get into it. Exposure. What is exposure with flash? As you see in this setup, there is absolutely no available light. It's only the flash, and that's it. And as I mentioned earlier, you were only talking about a manual flash. I'm not doing anything TTL. Uh, I promise I'll do a whole other video on TTL and when to use it, how to use it, all that good stuff. But this one is just going to be on the basics of flash exposure. And the five things, of course, like I always say, there's five things that affect that flash exposure. Number one, your aperture. Number two, your ISO. Number three, your modifiers. Number four, your distance. Number five, the power okay, of the flash, that is. So, simple enough. Aperture, up and down. If we want to take, this is our base exposure right here, F8 at uh, ISO 800, 125th of a second. We underexpose when we go to F11. We're going to get an underexposed picture. Then if we overexpose, get back down to 5.6, going to get an overexposed one. All right. Now, same thing with ISO. If we go down to ISO 400, it's going to be underexposed. If we go up to 1600, guess what? It's going to be overexposed. And you also notice that the 1600 and the 5.6 version are very, very close, or they should be almost identical. That should be happening because the flash isn't changing, the settings aren't changing, nothing else is changing, so they should be pretty much identical, and you can put them side by side and compare. They're looking pretty darn good. So let's get into some of the other stuff we're playing with today. The next easy one to think about after your aperture and your ISO, by the way, if you don't quite understand your aperture, your ISO, and your shutter speed yet, Check out this link. There's a really good exposure triangle that I talk about and, and talk about how that works. And we're also going to bring up the flash exposure triangle later on today. But first thing, let's talk about distance. All right, we already talked about aperture ISO. Now let's talk about distance. We move that flash back, it's not going to have as much power. If we move it closer, it's going to have more power. All right, very simple. I'm going to show you this is about a foot away, this first one. Then we're about uh, a foot back, all right? And then we're another foot back, about two feet back now total. And as you can see, we're probably about a um, stop and a half under or something like that at that two foot, maybe even a little bit more depending upon, you know, how you like to, to see this particular image. So distance, distance makes a big difference. Not only does distance make a big difference in the amount of light hitting the subject, it also makes a big difference in the quality of the light hitting the subject, all right? Next one here, I'm gonna add a softbox. I've added the softbox here. The quality of light is really nice. I actually like how just a couple little spots are highlighted, it actually really works, but there's not quite enough light. So adding that softbox has decreased the amount of light. By the way, I did reset this closer to that one foot spot and then I moved it even a little bit closer into about six inches. The softbox is about six inches from the uh, camera, from our little model here. And uh, it's actually pretty nice light. I really like it. Um, but as you can see, this closer one is a lot softer. 
you can really see the difference in the edges and the way the gray, the light gradates. You can see the difference, and even in move, only moving that six inches. By the way, that softbox that I was using is this one, the Adorama uh, Glow by Flashpoint softbox. It's the 24-inch model. You can pick it up at this link right here or from Adorama.com. Next thing is an umbrella. We added this umbrella. This is a 24-inch umbrella, I think it is, to it. Took off the softbox, added the umbrella, and same exposure setting, still at F8 at ISO 800, and we're pretty far under. And there I went to, I moved it even a little bit closer, so I'm right up to it, and I can't get it any closer, so now I had to increase the power. And that's the next thing that we wanna talk about, is increasing the power. Here it is up one stop, here it is up two stops total, and so that makes a huge difference. You have to be able to increase that power. If you can't get any closer, or you have the light exactly where you want it, increasing that power would probably be your next best bet, and the next thing you're gonna wanna change. So now I've shown you photos that quickly in your power, in your distance, and also your diffusion. For these last few photos, I took all of the diffusers off, all, the, all that stuff off, and I just have that bare flash again. And so right now our 1/128th power did not adjust any of the exposure settings on these. Then I pumped it up to 164th power, 132nd power. And so you can see there is a lot more light coming out of that strobe and it's basically overexposing and it's even starting to, to, to fade and to spill onto the background. There's so much light coming out of that, all right? So we've gone over all of those and you've seen examples of each and every one of those, whether moving the flash closer. Each of these things have a time and a place to be used. It's just a matter of thinking about, okay, which way do I wanna go? Do I wanna move a little bit closer to get a little bit softer light? Or do I just wanna increase the power? Or do I wanna change my depth of field? So those five things really do make a big difference. So I have reset, I'm at 1128th power, ISO 800 at F8. Now I'm changing the zoom head position. This is more or less another modifier, same idea, but I thought I would show you the difference in what it's actually doing in this kind of a scene. So right here we're at 17 millimeter, then we go up to 50, and there's more increments in the SB900 than this, but I just wanted to show you a couple. One, one uh, sorry, 120 and then 200. And you can really see between the 120 and the 200 the how small that pattern is starting to get and how much it's really starting to zoom down. If you flip between the two, and I'll show you here, you can really see how the two of those, it's, it's making a big difference. And again, that pattern of light getting smaller, which is pretty cool. Through this entire video, I have not talked at all about one thing, and it might be on your mind, and that's shutter speed. What does shutter speed have to do with the flash? Well, for the most part, it doesn't. It does not affect the flash at all in the scene, with one little exception, and I'll talk about that. But for the most part, it's not going to change it at all. So that's where you're able to harness the power of that flash and make some really gorgeous images by mixing the flash that you have, you know, that off-camera flash especially, and then the, um, you know, the available light. But if you can mix the two and master mixing of those two, you can really make some awesome images. So I added one single light, and here's the photo of that, just a light onto the background. Um, this light is not hitting the camera at all. It's only the flash on the camera, maybe a little bit of spill or reflective, and that's it. So first one here, this is kind of our normal setting, normal image. Um, next one, what do we do? We dropped our shutter speed. So we're at, for right here, we're at a 60th of a second, all right? Next one, down to a 30th of a second. You see the flash has not changed, but you see we are getting a little bit more reflection, a little bit more spill from the background onto the camera, especially up there in the prism area where the eyepiece is. All right, so we're down to a 30th, 
and now we're down to a fifteenth of a second. So it made a big difference. Now we're going to go the other way up to a 1 1 25th. So we've turned, it's decreased the amount and then we're going to go up to a 2 50th. Now at this point, my camera would not increase that shutter speed anymore. It's going to stop there. Why is that? Well, it's to prevent your photos from looking like this one. Basically what's going to happen is, is the, sh the flash is going off after the shutter completely opens in a normal sync. When you increase the shutter speed too fast, the flash can't keep up. So the way it works with Auto FP or with HSS on the Canons, I'm not sure the other brands, uh, what they call it, uh, the flash will turn on first, then the shutter will open, the shutter will close, and then the flash turns off, and that does decrease the amount of power coming out of the flash, but you then get a super high sync speed. You can increase your shutter to wherever you want. It'll make for awesome images. So turn that on. It's called Auto FP or HSS. It does not hurt to turn it on. Just understand that if you bump up that shutter speed, it will decrease the power of your flash. I think that is everything for today. Any questions, comments, I would love to hear them. Keep shooting Monday number 77 on 77. 2014 is over. Thanks, guys. Keep shooting. See you.